I've been told by everybody up on this roof that they're all off the roof. I am on the roof of Explosion 4. Got fire through the roof of the fire building in the entire rear section. Please, I was never given the payday. As you can account it for, okay? 610B, now is the main date, 610B. I'm out uh, here, we got a fire. One and a half story, single family dwelling, fire shown from the second floor, give me a second alarm on this. See up there, the top floor, I got people hanging out the top floor windows with a baby. Commercial building, uh, a lot of fire, a lot of smoke, go ahead and strike a third alarm on my orders on this. We got people on the front fire escape here with windows fences below them, we need somebody up there. Yeah, let them know we got a job. I'm pulling up now. Second alarm, I got a one-story single-family frame. Heavy fire showing from the attic. So we're using all hands. We got one line stretch, fire on the fourth floor. Second line being stretched. Primary stretches are underway. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Old School. I'm Rick Lasky, along with my good buddy, John Salka. And we've got, uh, as we always say, another great topic for you. Um, this one, uh, this one we thought of... Uh, Right now, just sit in our old Well, actually, room. we didn't think of it at all. Actually, somebody <laughs> suggested it to us, but it, but that is what we do. We sit around just about when we're ready to turn the computer on. We say, what do you want to do, this or this? Wait a minute, look at this guy. He suggested this, so we did get a suggestion. Well, and this was a little while back. Um, Brandon Parsons. Brandon Parsons is the one that uh, he said, he goes, I, you know, I listen to a lot of your shows. Um, you know, uh, what, one of the episodes that we do, what you should know. We just cover different topics and we were talking about uh, how, many, how, many, how many likes of hose uh, should you have on your rig and blah, 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 and so forth. And one of the things he was wondering was if we could talk about estimating the hose line stretch, you know, and, and you know, I, I told you, and I guess I want to start this one off. I think you've heard me tell the story before. Uh, I was riding out with my good buddy, my mentor, Chief Eddie Enright, when he was in the 3rd Battalion in, uh, in Chicago. And Eddie was, he was always schooling. He was always teaching. And we're driving on Chicago Avenue. I remember he just, he just stops in the right-hand lane. He goes, all right, Rick, third, third house down the end there. You know, about three stories, you know, about two and a half. He goes, um, fire top floor back. How much hose do we need? And I'm like, all right, um, I got to leave the front over the truck. So my bumper's going to be there. My tailboard, the tail, bumper's going to be there. Tailboard's going to be there. Uh, okay, it's going to take about 75 feet to get from there to the door. I said, like, yeah, I get it with the cross. Eddie was always about, you know, all aspects of the fire service. But that particular one was just, you know, just pull over and like random out of the blue, how much hose do we need right now to get to the And that's floor? such and that's such a a practical, <clears throat> you know, example, evolution of that's exactly how flyers operate. You're driving down a block, your siren's going, you see smoke, or you get reports of all of a sudden you make the turn, boom, there's the first time you're looking at the house. You see smoke coming out the second floor, you're looking at it very quickly. You gotta haul off the rig and tell the guys, hey, get the get the preconnect or get the 200 or get the blue line or, or whatever it is. And that's why you have to know your lengths and you have to be able to very quickly visually have to you know a hose line estimate is a visual mental exercise you should you should be able to do that stand in the front of the ring without moving you know it's not like you're running around doing a 360 and coming back saying i got it figured out now you know what i'm saying well and exactly and you know this goes back to several of our shows that we did uh on old school and with uh, the command post with fire engineering about specking your rigs and specking it for your specific needs and i think john you know there's a lot of places out there that have great looking pumpers when they're visiting but sometimes you look at it, you go okay, how much hose do you have? And why did you decide it at length? You know, and they, and they really can't tell you sometimes, you know, well, we thought we should probably have this one. And then a what if, if this one, and that one, and I'm like, yeah, but what about your still there? Like, what about your town? What about your city, your battalion? What, what, what do you need hose line stretch wise? That should, as far as I know, I mean, as far as I know, that should dictate what you put on your rig and why a lot of times, right. it's always nice to have extra, but you know, and, and there's a thousand variations that you can't cover all of them. But I'm glad you mentioned uh, spec in the rig because the South Bloom Grove Fire Department, where, where I'm a member, is in the process right now. I'm on the truck committee with a bunch of very knowledgeable guys, old and young officers and firefighters, ex chiefs, etc. And and we're specking out a new a new engine, a pump attack actually, but it's going to be something that potentially could be you know our first new rig out there. And that'd be a good a good. We ought to do a show just on that just uh, on, on the on whole specking yeah, process. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, I'm learning as much doing it now as I am, you know, anything, but, but that came up at the, at the most recent meeting. Well, so what are we going to do with the pre-connects? What are we going to do with the cross lays? You know, pre-connects are not cross lays. Cross lays are one type of pre-connect that you can have, you know, plenty of places got pre-connects off the back step, you know, my FDNY never, no pre-connects anywhere, you know, so Bump bumper loads pre connect right? Pre yeah. Bumper load is a pre-connected line, but th the point was it came up at the meeting and we started talking about that and we made some. I don't know. I guess you could call them 
Some things stayed the same because they were already right. They're already the best for our community. And we made some changes on some things too, because we have we have blocks and blocks and blocks, a whole neighborhood full of suburban, you know, 50 by 100, 75 by 100 home at the home at the home on, on, you know, manicured streets. And then we have, you know, as soon as you leave that immediate area, houses on bigger lots, half acre lots, one acre lots, two acre lots, all in the neighborhood still. You can see house after house, but they're much farther away from each other. Some of them are way down the driveway onto the property. And, and then we have an apartment complex, just a single apartment complex. It's like a dozen buildings that are way off the street, way off the street. And then when you go in the front door, there's two apartments downstairs, two apartments upstairs, you know, left and right, left and right. And we had some special stuff set up for that, that we, that we modified a little bit. So th th just that example there, those three examples of the layout of our community is just three examples and we, we pretty much are going to stretch a different line to each one of those three different places. Well, and, it, it, and you said that, and, you know, I remember, I remember being, you know, when I was doing my volunteer time, when I first started and part-time at the same place, the captain, we had this huge apartment complex. It actually ended up being split into three different, it started out as one big one, and then they split it with three different ownerships, but the buildings were really, you know, most of them were three, some four stories long, and we'd get a lot of fires in there, get a lot of the gangbangers starting fires, like in the in the laundry room, so it run up the plumbing walls and everything, get fire in each floor. And, you know, the, the 200 foot cross lays would get you the parts of the building, but not to the, you know, if, if it was the other side, you were screwed. If it, you know, if about, it would get you about to the middle of each hallway, maybe not on the third floor. So we, we went with a 300 foot pre-connect off the rear. And, and, and you know this, we've talked about hose stretches before. When you don't pull them right, when you don't carry them right, when you don't play it off your shoulder right, you know, you don't care, it, you know, and you're walking, they end up dropping piles of it, piles of it. Then it got back up there. We didn't have enough hose. So their answer was not, let's not train better. Let's not train harder. Let's not, you know, look at how we're carrying a hose. Let's add more hose. So added another 50 foot length. So went from 300 to 350. Now you got six kinks instead of three. And, and it was this gigantic thing that you were supposed to carry trying to get up there instead of just going, how much hose do we need? You know, and, and, you know, and, and how are we going to get it there? And one of the devices you guys talked about, which I, and I remember we used a, we used to use a wheel, but the rope, the rope, the, the rope, rope, it just came to my mind, the rope, the, uh, the, and I forget where I saw that you called it the hose rope, but you guys had it in South Blooming Grove and they had every, every 50 foot mark. I think it like a 400 foot piece of rope and every 50 foot was a big black tape mark on it. So you could see it. You could stand down the hallway and count them one, two, three. So basically what it was, was, was it imitated a hose line. So you could go right from the pumper, tie the end of the rope to the pumper, walk up the front, into the front steps of this apartment house, go into the first apartment, go as right to the as, end of it. And say, pull it oh, taut, you had to play we're, like we're only up to four. Okay, so let's make this five. This will be a five length, which means the other side of the hallway is a five length. Let's go upstairs now. Six, seven. And you can do very quick measurements without going with a tape measure, without using a wheel and doing all this other stuff. And then we just gather it back up into a big bundle and go down to the next driveway or the next entrance or the next house. And boy, oh boy, you could do, you could, you could do six apartment buildings, you know, you know, two story, nothing, nothing with garden apartments in, in, in an hour. You could with, with just with that was a really, really quick hose measuring device. And stick it back in the bag and off you go. You're Absolutely. Not, you know, and, and you, you can know. leave it on the rig. We left it on the rig because you could be in a box. You could be somewhere, get it done. Oh, foot on the stove, foot on the stove, hold the line, hold the line. We handle it with the can. We do some ventilation. We come back. How many legs do you think that would be, Billy? Oh, gee, I don't know, Chief. Which one would you stretch? I don't know, Cap. I don't, pull, pull the rope out. Let's see. Now we could just have a little mini drill right after a box or right at, a, at an alarm location. And know? again, as long as they don't pull it taut, play it like <laughs> you would, you know, a little meander. But but what a great idea. When you said that, I was like, that's a oh, I didn't awesome know. I, I learned it from somewhere else. I just, you know. Well, we, all, we all do. But that yeah. was just, that was such a great idea. So to our listeners, you know, before you get rid of that next, you know, bag of rope because you used it for a rescue or you're not whatever, and you can knot them together too, and that doesn't do anything. We're not. This is not. This is not exact science. This yeah. is fifty foot lengths. You can knot a couple of ropes together and still do the the fifty foot measurements with the black yeah. tape or oh, red tape. It's a great idea. Yeah. But, but that whole, you know, you know, estimating the stretch, if you will, you know, going back to Eddie and knowing, you know, you look at it, and and I always ask the question, so. Why the different lengths? Some well, we have a 150 to 200, 200, 250, and then we have this. Tell me, tell me why. Where in your town are you going to use that? We're, you know, we're not talking high rise, bringing a high rise pack up. Let's talk about where you're stretching. Like stretching you said, off the rig. And every firefighter needs to know. And, and, and I said this before, and I know how you guys feel about it with the control man, is 
the company officer, unless you have everybody behind you is brand new, shouldn't have to turn around and say, John, pull the top cross leg, pull the bottom cross leg. He or she's got enough to worry about. Every firefighter should be able to look and go, this, th- th- what Eddie Enright did to me, Rick, how much hose do you need? I'm a firefighter. No, how much hose do you need? Top floor, rear, rear top floor of that building. It's about three story frame. How m- you know, he's asking me. And he was saying, we don't, you know, the company officer can't be going, all right, make sure, John, you put it in pump. Now, don't forget, well, it's cold. You know, you have to know, firefighters should know how much hose they should be stretching. I worked in a lot of great places. I worked actually in four different fire departments over the years, but, but I'll, I'll restrict most of my comments here to the FDNY where I did a lot, a lot of time in a lot of good places, including being a captain of an engine and a lieutenant in a squad, which is an engine. So most good officers in good companies that would have for any amount of time, all I had to say was start a line. Uh-huh. Start a line. And somebody on that rig or everybody on that rig or the engineer or what we call the chauffeur or in any case of the FDNY, since we you know, have plenty of people, we have a control firefighter. But even if you don't, you could be rolling up with a with a crew of three, a, you know, an engineer, an officer, one or two firefighters in the back and have a little house fire somewhere. The officer should be able to say, start a line. And those two firefighters, with or without the help of the engineer, should know, one, two, three, visually look, okay, yeah, take, take the blue line, Billy. That's it. That's got the four lengths on it. And they should be off and running without any, without any longer delay than what I just went through right there. And before I, before I throw another question at you, just discuss again, we've done this before, but with this topic, bunging it up in this particular podcast, how important it is to, to, to we, we've said this before, if, it, if, it, if it's difficult loading the hose, it's going to be difficult coming off. I, I, it's something I learned a long time ago. If you can't, if you can't rebed your hose without looking at pictures and charts, and all that stuff. If it goes on complicated, it's going to come off complicated. You know, how it is. So, again, you know, the hose you have, we talked about it at the IC. Bill Gustin, the master, brought it up. But you have to know what hose bed you have, how you have it loaded, and how to get off there. Now, go back to the three-person company. Driver, captain gets off. I got to go do my 360. I've got someone screaming at me in the front lawn or whatever. Rick, pull the line. You know, and I've said before, if it's a, let's just talk to 200-foot pre-connect. You know, an inch and three quarter hose, even two inch. Every firefighter in North America should be able to pull that all by themselves. Right. They should be able to reach up and pull that. Pull At least the get the shoulder. whole thing on the ground and start moving toward the boat. A big section on your shoulder. Hey, I always ask, put a hundred foot on your shoulder and reach up and grab that loop and pull the rest out. Good drivers are going to turn around like I always do and give it a Feed tug. Feed the rest out. Well, they're going to give you a tug, make sure it's not right. left up. And you're going to go. And if you don't let go of this, again, keep in... The nozzle, I always say, keep the nozzle down where your knee is, not to your shin, but not up on your hip. Because if it does get caught by a car tire, boop, it pulls off, it's on the ground. So you've got it. You can put your shoulder into it. You know, you're talking a good, you know, several feet to go from your knee up to you know, for your shoulder. You've got it and you're going. But you've got that hose has to be able to play off your shoulder. And that's the and short crew. That. That's the one of the two guys in right. the crew which is Which is pretty common. Which in is North very America. common. So you got to be able to stretch it, maybe. It's not really maybe. It's really probably di- different than if you would with three or four like the FDMY, Chicago, and some other places have because they, they can just pull a nozzle and go and just start pulling that line. And there's other folks following behind them, pulling some more hose and lightening up and pulling off the rig and, and, and dragging it around the corner or around the car tire or whatever it is out in the street. So how, how you pull it, how you stretch it, which, which we're not going to get into too much today right now, is almost as important as as – doing the estimate the whole line estimate, well, knowing how much to pull no, again knowing how much to pull and and how you pull it and that doesn't happen we've said this before you hear me say in class all the time you know you why, why did why does engine four know that they're faster than engine eight and get the initial attack line into that burning building because they stretch hose 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 they stretch hose, yep. they stretch hose. you know you know how much i'm big in ems and, and paramedic a long time and all that stuff um the only two things that really matter on your fire engine, we've said this plenty of times before, is the water and the hose. Mm-hmm. Everything else on there is extra. Granted, it's all important right. stuff, don't get me wrong. Right. But, but you watch the videos of people that can't stretch hose. You watch people that stretch the wrong line or not enough line and or whatever. And kinked and bundled and, 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 and the knots on the street. And I'll say this. I don't care how perfect you are. You could still end up short inside right. a part- you know, right. some of these big buildings, some of these big houses, so so forth. But you have to have a, a pretty good idea how much hose you need and where it's going now. I, I wanna... And one more thing before we move on. And, and you got to have the mindset for speed. Yeah, you know, I saw something the other day. I think I may have screenshot it and it might be on my phone. I have to look it up. Um, it, it, firefighting is a time sensitive sport. It's time sensitive. You know, and, and you and I sometimes see it. We look at 
YouTube or some of these other videos you see on Facebook and you see these guys sort of like, sort of like half-assed prancing around the pumper, opening a compartment, walking to the back door, you know, pulling a line off and, and maybe laying it down and doing something or even pulling it off and just walking slowly towards the building. I'm like, hey, hey, there's somebody house on fire. Put a little, put a little bounce <laughs> check, in your step. We said check in the lasagna. Keep so, opening the So one of the things that helps <laughs> you stretch really fast is everybody going right to their position or getting right to their work. And I, I just want to mention, uh, I, I just happened to be riding in Wichita. I went on, on a box with my friend, uh, Sam Hiddle. He's a captain of rescue too. Good, great and, guy. Uh, great guy. Great guy. And uh, we went on a run and it was a job. It wasn't a big job. And as we rolled in, as we walked in, uh, there's the first two engine parked in front. And where was the nozzle man? On the back step, fully geared up, ready to go. Everything but air going, you know what I'm saying? And he had his hand literally up on the hose bed. And he was standing by. He was waiting in case somebody said, start a line. And, and that's the kind of that's the kind of positive attitude you have to have. But the, well, the other thing I want to mention, before, and then we can, you know, split the conversation from there is, you know, uh, knowing how much hose you need, figuring that out, the hose line stretch, the estimate, like FDMY, we, we don't have any pre-connected lines. I mean, we'll get a little, little line off the front bumper, but the rest of the lines, we have no cross lays at all. So there's, you can't stretch off the side of the ring. You got to go to the back. We got four hose beds back there, you know, two inches, three quarter, and a, a two and a half on the supply line. And the point is, you, you, you must do a hose line estimate because if you don't, you just keep pulling hose off and more hose and more hose and more hose. And when the last piece comes off, it's a coupling. It's attached to nothing. So if we need five lengths, we pull five lengths off and break it and connect it. Or if we need five lengths and we're not out of hydrant, you know, the last guy will wave the chauffeur off and he'll drive a length or two down the block until he gets to a hydrant. The point is you have to, you really have to know it. But don't think you don't have to know if you've got pre-connects. You still got to know, all right, we got two pre-connects, one with the nozzle on the left, one with the nozzle on the right, and they're both 250s. I was always against having them the same. I always like to have a longer one and a shorter one. Again, it's a, it's a personal preference. I like to know that if, any, if, if the short one fits, if the short one reaches it, take the short one. You got a fire in the first or the second floor of a house, and we got a four-leg stretch, it's going to make it. And never take the long one. Some guys say, ah, take the long one just in case you'll be having enough. I said, yeah, unless you, need, unless you need the second line up in the attic now above the fire. Right. And now you took the long one to the fire floor. You left two lengths of hose out in the front lawn. And now you expect me to take the full length and reach the attic. So you still have to know, you still have to do a mental visual, mental visual hose line estimate, say four will do it. You sure? Yep. Four will absolutely do it. Take the short one, Billy. And then you stretch the short line or the blue line or, you know, hopefully your lines are all, you're all labeled. Hopefully you can stand at your cross lays and it says 250, 300 or 200, 200 or whatever the numbers are. So you, you need to know what it is, and then you should be able to look at it as well. And, and none of this happens if you're sitting around not training. None of this happens if you're not going out and stretching hose. None of this happens if you don't know your still district. If you don't get out and drive and go, and what do you say? Play soldier, play marine, whatever. Get there and go, okay, if that building was on fire, what would it take to get to the second? Just what Eddie N right there. What would it do? What would it do? And at a red light. At a red light to the probie. Hey, probie, look, the building on the right. What size hole do we stretch? It's if you go to a two and a half to that store right there. He should come up with the right answer. And, and you said you said before about, you know, um, you know the guy, guys from Wichita, which we always talk about Wichita. We said it before, Wichita and Stockton, two of our favorite places, Stockton, California. I mean, these guys just, they fight fires every day and they train harder than anybody else. And I'll say it again, it's always amazes me that departments that, the departments that fight the most fires tra- seem to train the most. And the departments that are the slowest train the least. And it should be the opposite. But the reason the other ones get that good is because they train all the time. And, and I've said this before about carrying tools. If you get off there, we said before, if you pull up and, you know, rookie firefighter Lewis, we used to talk about this. If you pull up at, at a, a nothing show or investigation mode, the captain gets off to initiate the investigation. That, that nozzle firefighter isn't like following him around. The nozzle firefighter standing there and you go, what are you doing? I'm waiting for him to call me. You know, instead of, John, hurry up, get out. Now you got to, you see a guy come running out the building and go, go to grab a, He's standing going, well, I don't carry the Halligan. I don't carry an axe. I don't carry the can on this. That thing right there, that nozzle, that's my tool. I'm the Absolutely. nozzle. Absolutely. That, so he or she is ready to stretch that line right now as soon as they hear start a line. Now, before but, we- but not to say that small departments don't have to have a tool because some departments oh. don't even have a truck. 
There is no truck coming to some departments. So, you know, the officer is going to be obligated to carry a, a more substantial tool, right. maybe something that's bigger than that little officer tool that a lot of places carry, maybe a little more substantial tool. And the officer plays two roles. He plays officer and he plays force one, three, five, five. He's going to pop the door. He probably carry it in with him. And then they're going to go in there with the line, you know? So everybody doesn't have a truck. Everybody doesn't have a second or third guy to carry a tool. All right. Here, here's a question before we go into any further about estimating the hose line stretch, which, which is huge. All right. You should, and again, you should pride yourself. You should come out, look at your officer and go, see, I told you that's how much we needed. I told you, it's like the guy, uh, I think we were on 48, you, you, you were walking commercial building or whatever. Oh yeah. Dominic Livinati. <laughs> he was the nozzle man. And I was the captain. Great story. So I'm the new captain of 48 engine. We get it. I was just looking at 48's old American La France on, on Facebook. Somebody had a picture of it. And, um, uh, we, we get a job on uh, Fordham Road, which is a commercial stretch, a big commercial stretch, heavy duty. So the tr truck was out already. They gave it 1075. We rolled in there by ourselves behind the truck, which is normally exactly the opposite. Flames out the storefront. Good job. I hop off the rig. I start walking towards the building. And then I say to myself, oh, let me make sure they're stretching two and a half in here. <laughs> you know, FDNY commercial stores, especially good worker, is a two and a half in flight. Yeah, There's no yeah. discussion. So I quickly turn around and go back. And I... I turned on my heels, and as soon as I turned around, boom, I was chest to chest, nose to nose with Dominic Libinati. I can see him right now with the helmet on and everything else. He's retired. I, I just saw him recently. And he's got the hose over his arm. And he says, what? I said, just call, I just turn around and see. He said, no, you're not. You're turning around to see if we get the right size hose, right? I said, no, Dominic. He said, yes, you are. We got it right here. They had the two and a half inch hose. I was this very is happy. 48, don't you? Yeah, I was yeah. very happy. Yeah, I was there for a visit. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were, they were squared away before I got there. You know, but uh, it was, it's a great story really about Dominic and about me and about an officer, maybe having second thoughts or maybe an officer doing his job saying, you know what, even though this doesn't look good, let me turn around and make sure they do have the right <laughs> size line. Right. But the, the bottom line is it's a good story about firefighters knowing their job and the firefighters in 48 engine and just about everywhere else I ever worked, they knew their stuff. They didn't need an officer to tell them. Often the officers would say, Billy, start a line, give me five. You know what he told them? Give me five lines. Or he would say, uh, a captain, uh, in, four, in uh, 45 engine there when I was there. Murphy, a lot of, lot of jobs because I was the first two chief with them. So I would get there when they were given instructions and he would say, we got a well. That's all he would say is, we got a well. Now, what does that mean to listeners? What does that mean, we got a well? It means you have a well hole. And if you're not familiar with well hole, go look it up and be embarrassed that you're not familiar with it. <laughs> a well hole is when the stairway goes up and the, the banisters are separated enough that you could drop like a basketball down between the steps and it would go from the third floor down past the second and, and it would hit the floor in the first floor. Obviously an area that big or, or all the 007 movies when he's, when he's fallen and he's shooting guys on each right, floor. Right. <laughs> if, if you have a well, you can stretch the line right up the well, you can stretch right into the bottom and then they can go up. And, and what does it do? It takes a five or a six line stretch and turns it into a three person, a, a three line stretch because now the hose is going from the first floor to the third or the fourth, or maybe even the fifth floor with one length. Which, which normally would take maybe four or five lengths. So, so little hints like that, even just throwing that word out. And I'm telling you, that's all they said. Not from who to who or anything. It was just, we got a well. And everybody knew what that meant. And, and, and it goes back to the company officer sitting out with his or her firefighters explaining that, guys, let's have a game plan. We want to be the best. We don't want to be okay. We don't want to be just good. We want to be the best. We want to be the ones that, that Chief Salka says, you, no, come here, stretch that line for us. So I, I, I want to ask this question. This comes up all the time. I think there's a, a Facebook page or something called Hose Bed Porn. It, they take pictures of all kinds of hose beds. Really? You know? oh, I'm going to have mean, to look that up. It's pretty cool. Where I, I don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, I might be saying it wrong, but I'll look on it Facebook? up. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, oh, it's just like hose bed or it's on Twitter one or two, but it's okay. every time they, they're just snapshots. Of, cool. of hose beds and so, then questions too or yeah, no? yeah guys will say so what is this or they'll snap it and they'll go all right this is uh, charlotte engine 17 um if you look there's 200 foot of inch three quarter 200, 200 foot of, of two and a half 300 foot of this you know a thousand feet of five inch blah 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 and they explain what each one is and which right. nozzle and there's there's fog now there's smooth boards so so let me ask you john this question comes up a lot okay this question comes up a lot all right Hose bed port. There it is. There it is. <laughs> and boy, is that a nice hose bed too. But that's the whole thing is, and you know what? What a cool idea. Let, let, I, I let's, just press following. I'm going to be following them now. Let, let's brag about, <laughs> let's brag about that. But let me, let me ask you, this comes up all the time. FDNY engines, you look at the back of the two and a half and you see wedges, you see, you see door chocks stuck 
in, 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 in different things. And I, and I asked, I asked, I said, what is that? And I got two different answers. I got, well, about every so many lengths, we know, we're, you know, you're bringing a door chalk with you. Some of the companies, that's how they're market, how much hose. So, so they know when, when the hose bed gets down to there, when that chalk falls out, they know they got four lengths out. They, or yeah. So, and, and I said, he goes, well, it differs because we're in a different area of, of the city. You know, in Brooklyn, they may do things differently because of different buildings. Queens, it's a lot of, you know, residential structures where Brooklyn's out of brownstones right now. They're, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, so, there's brownstones everywhere, but there's a lot there. Yeah. Brooklyn, so, yeah. so he, he, what he said was, he goes, we have those in there and it's just tell you, you look up there and you go, that's three lengths. That's three lengths. Ooh, that's four lengths. And the other you thing know. is once the hose line is pulled, once the stretch has begun and they go into the building, particularly bigger building, but it doesn't really matter. If you can't see the front of the line, if there's just hose going from the hose bed into the building and you go to assist, how many do they want? They want five. You don't know how many are in. There could be one in, there could be three in, and you're looking at the fourth one on, on the street, or you could be looking at the second one. That could only be the second length off. In which case, you know, you got to pull three more off. So well, it is important to, to even be able outside to be able to determine how many lengths are going to Exactly. And, and, you know, it's nice to be able to tell your driver, engineer, your chauffeur, how many lengths they got to say, you know, what right. to pump at. So regardless of the reason, because I think there's variations, my whole point was, if you see those, ask questions. Ask, you know what, why are those in there? Because, you know, I did that a long time ago. I did that when I was, you know, hanging with Sal and Donnie back in early 90s in, in the FDY, and I'd ask that question, and, and they're still on rigs and other departments too as well. And that's hose line management. That's that's guys that are paying attention to what's on the rig, to what they got to what they got packed in there. You know, FDNY, we have inch and three quarter. We have six lengths of inch and three quarter with a reducer, two and a half inch hose. So 10 lengths to two and a half, reduce the inch and three quarter, and then six lengths of inch and three quarter on top. And we got two of those beds, two identical, right? So you got to know. Well, number one, why is it six lengths? I mean, why don't you have why don't you have twelve lengths of inch and three quarter? That way, you don't have to mess with two and a half because you're gonna have to pump too hard. There's a lot of friction loss when it's your three quarter, and they figured out way back one that about six. So let's call it five or six. If you do seven, is it the end of the world? Probably not, but it's probably a good guide to keep to limit your hose length, inch and three quarter at least, to about six lengths, and then and then you connect it to two and a half, and you can do you know however much of that you want because there's much less friction loss there. So. Those are all important keys. So when you're pulling a line, there there is no answer there. You you, you got to know exactly how many lengths you want. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna either help or hinder who's pumping the rig and, and and what you've got going in there. Especially if you're if you're redlining and you no longer can push what you want to need, and you can only stretch so much hose till little bits of water comes out of the end. And well, particularly that, in apartment houses, old law tenements, new law tenements, New York City, urban areas, Boston, Chicago, everywhere else, right? Nobody wants to stretch short. But I'll tell you what, stretch along a couple of times. Stretch two lengths of hose too many into an apartment building. I'll tell you oh. what, it's the worst thing you'll ever do. It's the worst thing you'll ever do. You're talking kinks. You're talking loss of pressure, loss of water. Guys pulling hose out. It's a mess. So that's why the hose line estimate is, is not just, well, you know, we don't have to do it. We got preconnects. We just pull all the hose off and pull the other end in. It's not quite that simple. Well, and I told, that, I told you this story before. I think I've said it on this show about um, – the young firefighter coming to my office I was in Louisville as captain. And he said, chief, you got a minute? And I said, yeah. He gave his cap. He says, you know, chief Cunningham said it's okay to come. You know, you want to make sure you do right, right. permission. He says, uh, you know, you're a big history buff of the fire service. Why, why, why are there 50 foot, you know, 50 foot lengths of hose except for LDH? Why is there 50 footers? And I'm going, I looked at Tim Tittle, God bless him. I go, uh, you got me on that one. I know why they're 200 foot pre-connects. And I said, you know, there's an old ISO thing with the 200 foot pre-connects cross lays or the, or the rear pre-connects was in the old days, that's what they did. ISO looked at from, from the, from the curb in front of the house, from the curb to the alley garage, typical suburban house right? was, was about 150 foot, about 150 feet. So with a 200 footer, you can make it to the alley garage, anywhere around it, hit any exposure, the garage is across the alley or next to whatever. And if you back it up, it will get you into a two, three story frame too, or building. I said, I know that, but I didn't know. And he goes, well, he goes, you know, this morning at that, you know, we had a house fire and it was, he goes, little uh, boot scraper things people have next to their stoops. This one was perfectly set right next to the, the stoop. When the coupling slid off the stoop, it got locked right behind there. And he, his cap, he goes, Cap Swindle's yelling, more line, more line, they're in there, they're around the corner. And I'm pulling that, I'm pulling like, you know, son of a bitch, I couldn't get it. I went out there, he goes, why do we have couplings on the 50? And he goes, it, you know, it seems that that's what always gets hung up the most. I looked at Tim, Tim goes, Order some hundred footers. 
we never look back. Guess what doesn't hung up anymore? To this so day, from the nozzle back foot. is 100 foot. We got rid of the couplings. But great, great habit for the listeners to think about. Just just something to take a look at is we got rid of that. We got rid of that first those first two couplings. If you're the male and female, so they're not getting hung so up. So your anymore. first length is 100 feet long, and then the yeah. fill out the fill out yeah. the stretch with regular 50 foot, footers. No more getting caught up or anything. Right, so else. the lead lengths. Right. Exactly. So. You know, and 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 you're my best bud, but I, I would say this if you weren't. You, you, you've you written probably the best book, if not one of the best books. I, I'll say the best book on the engine operations, the engine company. I always tell people, if you want a good book on, if you want to know about engine work and stuff like that, whether you're an officer, chauffeur, driver, or firefighter, hoseman, whatever, that guy or gal needs to get that book. So that being said, what hints? We're, we're talking, we're talking, this was a great topic. I, 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 want, I want to mention his name again. Uh, Brandon Parsons, because once in a while we get guys that'll say, "Hey, you covered," you know. Didn't say where he was from or not? Well, I, yeah, I got that. Um, okay. um, so you covered, you covered, you know this, but then we start talking at the kitchen table after listening to the show. I'm like, I wonder, could you guys go in a little bit more detail? Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, when it comes to that, and, and I, there is so much to talk about. It sounds like such a simple topic, the hose line estimate. It sounds so simple, and it's it's not complex. But it's voluminous. It's got a lot of stuff there. There's volumes of stuff. What's that word? I'll go look it up. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay. It's a kind of of hose. So, voluminous, voluminous. I'm looking, I'm more into into pressure for high rises and voluminous when it comes to volume. So, um, that's my new pumping term. We need more voluminous. All right. So, from, 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 let's put your, your captain of 48 engine, you know, helmet back on. Estimating the hose line stretch. What are some hints and some advice? We got a ton of people. We we love them all that listen to the show, come up to us in classes. We're actually be talking about it on day on day three in a class coming up in Spartanburg with our our good friends there in South Carolina. What, what hints and advice do you have when it comes to estimating the stretch? We've talked a little bit about it already. You can go back. You know what? It's, it's 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 the answer is simple and it's similar to some to many of the other things we talk about. Every job you go to, note. You know, say, wow, that was good. We stretched just the right amount here. You know, so confirm that the fact that you did the right thing, or wow, look at that. We got two lengths out on the front lawn. This this would be when we talk about the roll call with right. the company officer cam, the company officer cam when the relieving officers relieve the other one. So John, you, oh, we had a job. Really, where was it at? Hey, you know what? The two hundred the two hundred was perfect. If you pulled a two fifty, it would have been too long. Right. The two hundred, right. if you catch a job anywhere on that block, John. And you're sharing. So that's the first hint is use all your jobs, use all your experience and go back and quickly review it. Even if just the officer talking to one or two five hundred, look at this, the four length stretch works good in these houses on this and this end of town. That was great. Or you know what? I mean, we just made this guys, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe maybe we better pull a longer one next time, whatever it might be. You know, you you have to pay attention to that. That's the first thing. The second thing is to get out there and train. You know, I remember when I was a captain of 48 engine, we started doing EMS work. You know, of course, in the FDMY, you did whatever they called you for. They pulled a box, you did whatever it was. So you get hit by a car, we were doing EMS. But the point was, we got officially involved in EMS while I was a captain of 48 engine, to the point that EMS was shut down as an agency and absorbed into the fire department, became a bureau of the FDMY. Right. And now engines were officially sanctioned and trained and equipped and went out on EMS runs. <clears throat> and, and I must tell you, it wasn't the most popular thing in town. <laughs> Especially in FDNY, you know, guys were just weren't used to doing it. They're used to just doing runs and fires and everything else. Make a long story short, what, what turned out to be great was you could go to 100 gas leaks in 48 engine and you never go in a building. The officer might go in a building with the truck, see what's going on, and the truck goes in to make an examination and smell it and bring the gas meter in and find it and shut it down and report to the chief out front. And the engine's sitting out, you know, sitting outside, either sitting outside or standing all at the back, the back step ready to go, but they're never in the building. Truck gets to see every run they go on. They go in the building and check it out. And the engine only really goes in when they stretch in. Now we start going on EMS runs. And guess what? Here we are inside these buildings. And not only are we inside, we're inside alone. There's no truck bumbling around, banging into us. There's no hose laying on the floor. There's no emergency. We're going to a medical emergency. But when we get done, the first thing I would say is, hey, guys, was there a well here at this building? We were just there for a heart attack doing CPR. And on the way out, I say, does this building have a well? To see if the guys noticed it walking up the stairs for this medical call. How many likes you think it is to this apartment we're standing in right now? Gee, I don't know, maybe maybe three. Well, let's check it out on the way down. So that was my see, second did suggestion. You see, is. Did you see those stairs leading down to the basement? Could you imagine having to stretch down into that basement? Right. Did you see the crap they have there and all the other stuff? And then what the hell was that thing they built on there? All so you can stuff. make a lot of training evolutions out of medical runs as an engine. Who doesn't only go in there? And the third thing was building inspection. Again, 
not like the hottest topic in the world, quite important and very, you know, to, to everybody to know their buildings, right? Like Brannigan said, know, know your building, right? And that's fine. And like I always say, the first time you're in a building shouldn't be the day it's on fire. Right. So knowing that, we're, we're going to get involved in building inspection, going out there and pre-plans, right? And when you're out there doing building inspection, even routine building inspection at a, at a, at a hardware store, you should also be doing the same thing. Hey, guys, look down here in the basement. We're looking at the storage of the paint. Guess what? How many lengths to down here? All of a sudden, you change the topic. A flip of a switch, you change the topic. How many lengths from our rig parked right in front to right here? Now I start, now I'm thinking about hose line estimate again. And we're on a building inspection, you know, task. And who doesn't want to talk tactics and strategy? Uh, now, never say, oh, come on, Cap. Don't bother us with those hose line questions. <laughs> we want to look at the paint cabinet. You know, I mean, it's just not going to happen. Right? So think of all the places and all the times and all the opportunities, both volunteer and career, that you have to do that. I mean, you go out on driving. Remember in Mineola, when I was a volunteer in Mineola a long, long time ago, in the 70s, we used to go Sunday morning. If you wanted the train to drive, you go meet at That's the firehouse on Sunday 1970s, morning. 1970s. Yep, 1970s, yeah. <laughs> and uh, used to go to the firehouse on Sunday morning. We'd go out with the rig, whatever company you were in. You'd go out on your own rig with the officer. And three or four or five guys would be on the rig and one guy driving. We'd go to the deli first and we'd get coffee and rolls and stuff. And then you'd take turns driving around. So every red light you stop at, the officer could say, hey, building on the right, guys. Look at the building on the right, the, the, the bakery. What size holes are we stretching? Or how many lights in? or whatever question you can answer. So you can always add this hose line estimate and hose line size question to every other activity you get involved in, including returning from runs. And it, we, we said it earlier on, it doesn't happen unless you get out of the firehouse. Oh, it I doesn't actually. happen. Now, I think the first step is you guys sit around the kitchen table or the training room table and talk about nozzles and lengths and hose and why and talk neighborhoods and stuff and have that pre-conversation. And then you got to get out there because you can only imagine so much. And I, and I love the idea Guys, think about it. I'm telling you, I thought we would have, what a, what a brilliant idea. No, I don't care who thought about it, but I got it from you. Um, you know, the, the, the hose rope tools, we call it. Not a the hose, hose rope. The hose rope not, is not a great tool. Not for hose up to a, you know, up yep. to a roof. Every 50 foot market, you got to do it. And you know what? Stop, grab the bag. And you know what? Most people are like, you, you need to come into my apartment. But sure. Now you're not banging with couplings and That's stuff. what I'm saying. It's so easy to run it in and run it out. Without doing any damage or inconvenience to anybody, and you do it in a tenth of the time. I just we're just doing some training. We just and, and most most people go. Right. What are you guys doing? I was estimating how much hose we'd have to bring in here if, if there was a fire here. And even if you want to ask ahead of time, look, we just we have a rope that doesn't do anything. We're, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, you know, nowadays they what they want to do they take pictures. Firefighters are here training at my building. You know, my business or building, whatever. We, got, we, have a, we have a great fire department. Look at these yep. guys and yep. you know. Oh, well, you know, estimating the, the, the hose stretches, uh, the hose line stretches is, is uh, a bigger deal than some people make it out to be. Vital. And, you Vital. Know, it's, it's, it, I think it's the same thing with two things we've talked about before, you know, just to heal, man. I've heard that so many times. Well, you, I was just to heal the heal man, you know, the heal guy at the fire. Those people right there just told you they don't realize how important it is, that position. That's that's as bad as hearing a driver operator go, would you, what'd you hook do? Up and look up. Yeah, hook, hook up and look up. I was just, I'm just pumping. Really? You know, what you happens without you? You didn't right. get us there safely to and from, and you didn't pump water, and you didn't keep us alive. You didn't keep us, it's blown over our head, and we kept water and all. Yep. Yeah. My really? last my last word on a hose line stretch is how important it is, how vital it's not important, it's vital. I think that's a couple of levels above important is just do it wrong a couple of times. Oh. Do it wrong a couple of times, whether it's long or short, and, and you'll and, be proud. And don't add hose. Well, you don't need to add hose to your links because you're not deploying it properly. I learned yeah. that a long time ago. We ended up with this gigantic, gigantic bundle of hose, and we still we actually dropped it more then. It's like, why don't we just why don't we just stretch it and play it out like we know what the hell why don't we're we doing? Just learn how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I could talk about it now because look, look, you and I have never shied away from saying, all right, another way I screwed up earlier in my career or what yesterday or whatever. We have no problem saying that stuff. There's a lot of people out there with the nine foot arms that would never admit it, bat themselves in the back. But you know, it, you learn from your mistakes and, and you get better at it. So, Absolutely. hey, never underestimate it. You know, I mean, fire don't go out with the fire hose and the water and the nozzles and all that stuff. And know how much water comes out of your hose. We talk about that. You got to know what your flows are. You got to know what, what what kind of pistol you have in your hand, not pistol grip, pistol. And never underestimate the importance of the hose estimate. Oh, the hose line stretch. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Brandon, thank you, buddy. Thanks for a great suggestion. Yes, um, you know, and like I said, a lot of times we, we, we try to keep these 30, 35 minutes, sometimes 40, uh, so people can work out, listen, or drive or whatever. And sometimes we might 
pull up a little short, if you will. And, uh, uh, you know, when folks will say, hey, how about we do this? So great idea, Brandon. Thank you. Appreciate it. John, if they want to get a hold of you for a class or a book or a coin or whatever. Chief John Salta at gmail.com. And I'm Chief Lasky at gmail.com. We appreciate you being with us and spread the word about old school. Uh, we have fun doing this. Uh, no script. Uh, no, uh, no, no, nobody paying us. We're not asking for donations. Never. Like some guys no do sponsors, all stuff. no script, no, you know, no hats or mugs for sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's some good people that do that, but we're just, we don't have enough time for that shit. But anyway, and that being said, folks, uh, we ne we'd never end any of our shows. And I would ask you to please keep the men and women, armed forces and your thoughts and prayers. And remember, never forgetting means just that never forgetting. Thank you. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.